Um, the point is, we do coronary angiograms, and when we see coronary angiograms in a CD, I do not see LV angiograms mostly. So uh, my question to all my, I mean, to few students and all the de delegates here, that do you think that LV angio should not be done? It is superfluous. It is, uh, it is something called, uh, should be done if required, not at all done. So I think an angiogram is not complete if you do not do an LV angiogram, as simple as that. ECO can give you a lot of info information. I do not have any, I mean, rivalry with ECO, but yes, there is always a correlation. Anyway, and so. Yeah, yes. So basically, why I do coronary angiography? First of all, to see, to prove my clinical points, whether the patient, I have proved that there is some amount of ischemia somewhere, and I need to know that if that can be correlated with my findings with the coronary anatomy. So coronary angiography is a clinical correlate. This is a clinical correlate and nothing else. If I give you an angiogram and you, I, I ask you, what will you do in this case? You shouldn't say, I won't do anything. Give me the history first. Give me the background first. Then I will do something. Otherwise, angiography is meaningless. Nothing. So first is, it is a clinical correlate of ischemia, number one. And number two, next is, Wow, what I will do, what would be my management strategy? These two missions are important. Number three is, if you think that I need to do something in this case, what would be my safety profile and how the patient will fare after the procedure? First is, whether I can do this procedure safely. And next is, whether there will be a long-term effect. So, with all this in mind, I will see a coronary angiogram. First, I need to have a correlation with my clinical findings. Number two, I need to see that whether something has to be done, what type of management it should, it, the gentleman should have or lady should have, and whether I can do it safely, and lastly, what would be the long-term effects. So, with that in mind, I will do an, uh, uh, I will see a coronary angiogram. So there are some general ideas. So how you go about a coronary angiogram? First is a caudal view. Any coronary angiography should start with a caudal view. You see that there is either an epicaudal or a low caudal. There is no fixed uh, thing about it. A caudal view is necessary. Why? I am talking about the left main first because it is the it, it supplies about the 75 percent of the blood in the heart. So if you take a caudal view, you, you will always have the juncture of the two main art branches of the left main, that the LCX and LAD, right? And some part of the distal left main. This is the crux of the uh, management and crux of the, uh, I mean, safety of the patient. So I need to see these two, two things first. But the other areas, like the middle part of the LED, its branches, and also the distal LED are better seen in cranial views. But in caudal views, I can see the very distal branch of the LED also. So a cranial view and a caudal view, these are two things necessary to, for delineating the coronary anatomy. Now here, the uh, caudal view, there is a lot of overlap because the arteries overlap with each other. So you need to have a view whether there is minimum overlap. So you need to follow a rule. What is the rule? The LCX moves in the same direction at the image intensifier with the gantry. So if you take a LAO view, 
your, you see your arteries are overlapping with each other. LCX is overlapping with LAD. If you take more LAO, LCX will go more left. And if you come more towards the right side, LCX will come down. And the LED will move in the opposite direction. So in a, say, epicordal, there is some amount of overlap. So you move the gantry to the left. So there, there may, may be a gap between the LA, 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 LA and, uh, LED and LCX if the, there is upward the deflection of the uh, LCX. Or if you want to have a, uh, in a, say, in a vertical heart, if you separate the two, you come more called uh, RAO view. Then the LCX will go to the left side and RAO to, uh, LED to the right side, and there will be a big gap, and the two things are separated. So remember one thing here LCX follows the gantry, LED moves up in the opposite direction. Next rule is in a cranial view, if you see the arteries that run to the border, they are diagonals. LAD never go to the borders of the heart, except in the apex. So if there is, a, uh, there is a branch which is going to the border of the salute, cardiac salute, it is diagonal, not LAD. Sometimes LAD is 100% occluded, and you can see, the, uh, see only the uh, diagonal which is going to the uh, border of the heart, and it looks like an LAD, it is not LAD, because it is touching the border of the heart. LED will never go to the border of the heart. See this. <clears throat> in this view, um, in this view, this is the LED. This is the LED. Which one is the LED? This is the LED. It is in the middle. And it is going towards the border of the heart. It is, it is not LED. It is the diagonal. There are two diagonals, one diagonal, and there is another diagonal. These two are going to the borders of the heart, so they are diagonals, not LED. So again, if you look at the views, like epic, all the cranial views will have this. The LED will come upward downwards. Why I'm showing this? The, there are two grooves in the heart, AV groups and interventricular groups. So, RCA and LCX both are in the interventricular groups, AV groups. So RCA in the uh, uh, right AV group and the left AV group. And if in the AV group, the branches, if they uh, produce branches, all the branches that go towards this side is atrial branches. Towards this side are the ventricular branches. Whereas if you see the LED, it is in the inter right interventricular branch it will only supply the ventricle. The, these branches, which are lateral branches, are supplying the left ventricle, and these branches are supplying the right ventricle. So LAD, or interventricular position of the coronary artery, they never supply atrial branches. The arteries which are placed in the AV right atrioventricular group, RCA and LCX, they have the atrial branches as well as the ventricular branches. So again, the AV group is between the atria and the ventricle. So the artery in the AV group will have atrial branches and ventricular branches, whereas the interventricular branch, interventricular artery will remain in the interventricular group, and it will have right ventricular branches and left ventricular branches. So a RAO caudal, if you take it, this is a basic RAO caudal 2020, and you will, able, will be able to see the whole LCX, good branches between uh, LCX and WM1. And I told you that there, are, there will be a lot of overlap. So if you move a little you know, uh, left, this artery will come more leftward, and you can, have the, you can have the orthogonal view of the LCX so that you can see the arteries very well and the branching very well. So towards the left side, the LC LCX will move towards the left. <clears throat> and towards the right side, the LAD will move towards the red, I mean right, I mean in the opposite direction. If you go LAO, the LAD will come this way, and you can see the LAD more perfectly. So the best view of LCX is the RAO caudal, often good for distal LMCA and also proximal LAD. And remember, the ostium of the left LMCA 
which is always a challenge, always a challenge. Do not, want, do not see the osteal of the left brain in a yellow caudal view or any caudal view. No caudal view will show you the osteum of the LMCA. The osteum of the LMCA is better seen in cranial views. You can reduce the cranial view to some extent. You can, cranial view, it, it can range from 10 degrees to 30 degrees, but it is better seen in a cranial view. So next is the yellow caudal view. It is a very good view for the distal LED and the branches, I mean distal LMCA and the branches, and particularly in a horizontal heart. So, but in a cranial view, if, if, <coughs> sorry, but in a vertical heart or in obese patients, epicaudal view is not a good view. There, you can have a uh, good view of the distal LMC and branches in a cranial view. So, because that would be orthogonal, this yellow cranial will be orthogonal to it in a vertical heart. And this view will be orthogonal to a horizontal heart. So this orthogonal concept is very important. Other, if you do not take the angio in an orthogonal view, the <clears throat> there will be foreshortening of the arteries and sometimes the lesion are missed. <clears throat> so I will come to a small example. See, this, you see, this, this is an epicaudal view, and you see the arteries are jumbled up. Then they took a Eleocaudal view. So, do you think that you can see the LCX ostium? Yes or no? You can't. So we did. We could not see. So we went to this view. To some extent you can see. We have reduced only the, you can see this caudal is 45, ELO is 27. More caudal. In more caudal, if you go more caudal, this LCX will go more caudal because it is follow the gantry, gantry. It will come more down. So you can see again the caudal, be, uh, some part of the ostium. Next is this. We went more ELO. So the LCX went more towards ELO. And we can see the all three branches. Now you can see that there's a very significant lesion at the LED osteum, though it is uh, hidden some, to some extent. The LCX remains almost free. So we did an IVAS before stenting. You see, this is the LCX, this is the LED. And you see the LCX, it is free of disease. So basically, your job is to see that every segment of the artery, whether it is free from other overlapping segments, and to decide. So you can change your angles depending on the basic formula that always the LCX follows the gantry and LED goes opposite. So according to this formula, you change your angles. Next is the best view for LM, and I told you that the a left, I mean, LMC ostium is better seen in a LED straight or LED epicranial, and the distal is seen by yellow caudal, RAO straight, or all caudal views. Now, this is the, this is another art, I mean, angiogram. And if you see that there is a distal LMC disease, and there are branches of LED and LCX, both are diseased. So, this is a, Apicaudal, sort of apicaudal view, mild yellow, and you can see both the branches very well. And this is a cranial view. It, as it is almost a vertical thing, you can see both the branches in the cranial view. This is the same patient. And you can see that both the arteries can be seen in a vertical view also. And this is the LED. <coughs> so apicranial or RAO5 cranial 35, Eleocranial, they are good for the mid part of the LED, distal LMCA and proximal LC LCX, particularly in a vertical heart. But eleocranial is not a very good view for the interventional cardiologist because eleocranial will have more radiation to the operator and sometimes the arteries are very much overlapped. So don't take eleocranial view you know, for your intervention take shallow and aerocranial, that is your view. 
these are the different uh, uh, how we classify the lesions. These are basically some pointers. These are these should be cramped. I am not going into it. You know this is theory almost. And I rather go to a case example. See, this is an ECG. There is a R wave here. There is a Q wave here. So we took the ECG. And you see that there is a lesion here. <coughs> and the flow is very much sluggish, which suggests that this is the culprit artery and thrombus laden artery because the flow uh, thrombus has gone to the microvascular vasculature and the flow is slow and you know we classify it according to the TME classification and by TME classification it is TME 1 to TME 2 flow when it is TME 0 you cannot see any distal artery when it is TME 1 you just see the arteries but you cannot see the all branches and when you see TME2, you can see the TME branch, I mean, this thing, uh, branches, but not to the distal, distal part. And TME3 is a normal flow and normal rate. So this is a TME1 to TME2 flow, and this is the culprit artery, LCX. Next is a myocardial blast grate. And there are three types of blast grate. Zero, there is no blast, only the, you can see the uh, branches. One. 2 and 3 according to the, uh, 2 and 3 according to the blast grade and normal blast is 3 2 is blast they will be there but there will be no washout and 3 is normal blast and normal washout so and also this is the last which is the new syntax code by which you know how difficult will be the situation according to the score if you see that it is less than 22 you can go for a pci if it is 22, 32, you know that PCI and can be taken, but uh, surgery is also an option. And above 32, the uh, surgery is better than PCI. These are the collateral circulation. This is almost, a, again, a theoretical subject. But you need to know that the collaterals are important for a CTO recanalization. And the most important collaterals are the septal collaterals. Normally, there is a septal and epicardial collaterals, and there is a ratio between septal and epicardial collaterals. And if the septals are more, then you can see the arteries according to the septal circulation. If you see the uh, artery very well with septal, you can be, it can be easier for you to go uh, through the septal in, into the uh, blocked artery. But if there is an epicardial artery, and if the epicardial artery is larger, then the septal will be less. So in that case, we took a septal, and you see the where we went through the septal and entered into the uh, main artery. So this is called septal surfing. You just put the wire across, and then you put the microcatheter below up. <coughs> so next is LV angio. Why I told you that LV angio is important? See this. This is a coronary angiography. It's almost normal. The patient came with angina. Echo was normal. And see this. What is this? What is this? What is this called? This is called ballerina foot deformity. This is a ballerina foot deformity. Ballerina foot deformity is a deformity which is produced in the LV angio during in HCM. But there are case reports that ballerina foot deformity can have a severe mitral regurgitation due to mitral valve prolapse, and it can give rise to sudden cardiac death. So you, I, I have seen a patient who had a normal coronary angiogram, having chest pain, released, and came back with SCD in the OPD. And probably LV angio was not done, and it could be a ballerina foot. Who knows? This is a ballerina foot deformity. Next is, this is another. Again, this is, angio, uh, the patient came with angina. This is the angiography, normal angiography. Large arteries. See the LV angio. It is almost a spade-shaped deformity. 
So what is the space of deformity? And it is usually missed 31% of the cases. This apical type of cardiomyopathy is missed in echo. This is a report you can see in the internet that apical cardiomyopathy are often missed in echo. And this patient, the echo was normal and the angiogram was normal. And this is this had a spread shape of deformity. And this spread shape of deformity, they come with uh, angina, sometimes arrhythmia. So you need to be particular about these patients, need, need a follow up. So <clears throat> if you plan a PCI after CAG, the biggest concern is associated osteal disease and guide LM ventricularization and damping. Be very careful about damping. If your car catheter gets damped while you plan a PCI, you should not do anything before judging that whether there is an osteal disease or whether you need to do something to the osteum. And if you are doing something there, you should have a very quick job Otherwise, there will be a pulseless VT after you finish your angioplasty or even during the angioplasty. This is a major cause of death during PCI. And this is called ventricularization. This is a normal, uh, I mean, uh, aortic, but this thing, um, uh, pressure waves. And this is ventricularization. Ventricularization means this is a flattening. Between the two waves, there will be a flattening. And if this is there, be very careful of the osteal disease and do not take PCI unless you take care of this. And remember, the side hole catheters are menaces. Do not use a side hole, side hole catheter. It will give you a false impression of security which is not there. So a PCI operator should not use a, I mean, side hole catheter. See this. Sir, for LV angio, instead of pigtail, why did you use that catheter? Is it, uh, or a hand injection was given? Yes, that was a, uh, I mean, uh, radial angio. And the tiger has a, uh, two, you know, two uh, uh, apertures, one at the tip and another at the side. So the tiger is enabled to do LV angio. So this is about the LM case. You see, there is a distal LM lesion. But when we put that, put the catheter in, there was a uh, ventricularization. So we saw that there is a osteal lesion there. And also you can see this in a cranial view. And you see the, you know, can you see? There is a significant osteal lesion there, just beyond the catheter. So this patient, you need to have a quick job. You dilate the whole thing first, put a strength first, and secure the main artery, and then go for this, the circumflex, OK? So initially, they planned for a two stent. And, and two stent means nano crush. So we took, actually, we did a, a provisional stenting by doing a tap. And you can see that we can finish the job by two stents on itself. So I will go some case examples. So this is an angiogram. It is almost a normal angiogram. You can see it's a normal angiogram, OK? But there are a lot of overlaps. But if you look at the angiogram, again, see this. Can you see this? Somebody should volunteer. What you, what you are seeing? Is it normal? Absolutely normal? What is this? You can see that there is some amount of dye in the ventricle. The left ventricle is skinny. Yeah. When you give an angiogram here, the left ventricle is skinny. Is it normal or abnormal? Please give them a mic. Is it normal or abnormal? Yes. Do you think in a coronary catheter fistula? Coronary catheter fistula, when it's present, there will be more visualization of the some part of the ventricle. And you can see the dye wing is inside out of the chamber. So it is not a true from coronary cameral fistula. What is this? This is a peculiar uh, subset that is first published in circulation is a persistent thebaceous sinusoid presenting at 60 This patient, 
they have a lake inside the myocardium, venous lake in the myocardium. And from that venous lake, fibrillation veins open into the LV. And so when you do an angiogram, some of the branches go into the lake, venous sinusoids into the myocardium. And the, from the venous sinusoids, they go into the LV, can, and, I mean, uh, LV cavity and visualize the LV cavity. So this is a persistent Thibetian sinusoids presenting his ischemic heart disease. And this is, a, this is the angio. You can see it in circulation. Now, this is, I mean, sorry. This is our next patient is a diabetic patient. He, she complained of, this is a true, true picture. You see what happens. Complaint of severe unstable angina was admitted in a deputed hospital in Calcutta. It's a very old angio in 2002-03. So coronary angiogram was done, which revealed triple vessel coronary artery disease, and she underwent CABG in 2004, a lima and a vein graft. Okay. One year after CABG, again she complained of chest pain, not relieved on optimum medical therapy. So coronary angiography was advised, and there is our finding. So it is a second angiogram. What do you see? Somebody should volunteer. Please have a mic and say. So there is a lesion there. And also the right is gone, OK? This is the lima. See the lima of catheter and see the lima. Lima is atretic. OK? Agreed? OK. So. Coronary angiogram showed there is 85% in proximal LED, LCX 100% occluded, RCA non-dominant, Lima is atretic, RSVG to OM1 has 80% lesion after the proximal anastomosis. So the operator advised a, a PTCA and sending up the LED and RSVG. Okay, D do you agree with that? Do you need to know anything e extra? No. So, okay. So they did it. They did a good job, good stenting of the LED, and then the vein graft. Then the vein graft, good job. But after the procedure, the patient again complained of chest pain. And after six months, it was gradually increasing. Medications increased. So she was again advised for coronary angiogram, the third angiogram. Now you see, what you see? This is very, very interesting. What do you see now? That atretic lima is gone. Now you can see the lima in the gap. So the lima which vanished in the blue reappeared again. And they say that your everything is normal. You go back, on stay on medications. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, this lady was a uh, wife of some doctor, the doctor came to me. So I saw that when you give the dye in the LED, I mean LMCA, the lima is back flowing. That came to my mind. So I thought there is something in it. So I did something. I did a angio which is not specific for lima. I just Give a, gave an angio in the subclavian. And you see, the left subclavian is a 90% disease. So initially, when they put a lima across, they did not do a proper subclavian shot. So when you see a lima, do not go to the lima to show your prowess of catheterization. Don't do that. First, image the subclavian. Then go to the lima. Otherwise, you will miss it. And what I did, I just put a stain there. I put a balloon there, and I put a stain there. And everything was gone. She was healthy. So she had three unnecessary procedures. Only one stain could have been enough for her symptoms. OK. And then my, it is the last case maybe? No. So again, this gentleman came with angiograms. I mean, came with the angina. And this is a RCA. See this. This came with angina, lady. And I was in the console. I, mean, I was looking at the hooking of the RCA. Just remember, 
Just see this. And she is hooked, it is normal. So people said, yes, there is nothing. And, this, and see what? What is this diagnosis? So important to see that everything, you know, the gentleman did everything but missed one thing. She, he, he was doing it without a hemodynamic. So there was, whether there was damping, he did not notice. And this is a case of spontaneous coronary artery dissection, SCAD. And in a SCAD, sometimes you can go into one of the planes which will have a almost normal looking lumen, but it is not normal. If you look at it, when you see, uh, it has gone into it, and you see the dye is holding there. Dye is holding there till the catheter is not out. So it is the false lumen. And believe me, this patient, if such a patient, scared patient comes to you with an acute coronary syndrome, and if you detect it, and the patient is hemodynamically stable, no angina, do not do anything. Do not do a stenting. It is a disaster. And I will show you, because I did not know the treatment strategies that time, because every day we are evolving. Nowadays, the treatment is, if there is a significant hemodynamic compromise, if there is a acute occlusion in the form of MI, scared should not be touched, because they heal spontaneously. And if you do, are to do something, you just do, a, do with a balloon, preferably with a cutting balloon, and c come out. Because these lesions are not atherosclerotic lesions, and th these lesions heal spontaneously. So this is CAD, spontaneous coronary sir, dissection. Sir, in the, excuse me, sir, in the last slide, the distal banqueted brass is normal or? I didn't get you. Sir, in the last slide, please, sir. Hmm? The second angio, sir. Hmm? The distal dialect, sir. This is the this is one of the blush here, and the, the, probably this is the area where it is blocked. So it is a TME two. It is not washing out. So this is a TMP grading of two, because the blush is there, but it is not washing out quickly. So as because she is having acute coronary syndrome, some part of it is there is thrombus grading perhaps. And uh, this area is TB2 uh, grade, I mean, TMP grade. This? No, no, this is a scan. No, no, this is the branch, you know, you can see the branch there. It is the first branch there. So, if you look at this, you see this. See this. This is the false lumen. And this false lumen and true lumen, somewhere it is mis I mean, uh, mixed. And this is the area, which is, we can see this, this area. This is the branch which is supplying this area, perhaps. This area. So. So. So we did a stenting, and there was a lot of slow flow, and a uh, lot of slow flow, and it is not a perfect job. So I was mistaken. So basically, I need the you know, need of the hour is to balloon dilate, and perhaps to a cutting balloon, and to, I mean, establish the flow, because stent is not needed here. So this is the management protocol, so I'm not going into it. There's a lot of theory you can see uh, in, the, in that picture, the references have been given. The last maybe, see this, this is an angiogram. And now this is a very important angiogram. What you can see? You can see that there is a very calcified lesion. You agree that there is a calcified lesion here? You can see the calcium there, okay? Now, <coughs> If you look at the angiogram, you see that the artery has got two nasty veins. One is there to there, and then after that there is a lesion. 
So if you use something, a device, to cut the calcium, and in most of the cases it is a rotational atherectomy, you need to select a guide catheter which will not go straight away to the uh, lesion. Because if, you're, if you start rotablating, your bar will jump. A little jump will be there always in the bar. So if the bar jumps, it will go into the lesion and the bar will be stuck. So plan it accordingly. We plan with a, the plans are this, what would be your guide catheter? What would be your modus of plaque modification? Do you require an imaging? Do you need extra device for stent delivery? And what complications you may anticipate? You think of this and you change your guide catheter. And see, I change the guide, this is an Amplus AR1, and it is at the mouth of the, or, or ostium of the artery. And you can see the bend here, the nasty bend here. You can see the bend? So when we took this, I, my, I was sure that my guide catheter should be out of the ostium so that if my bar jumps, it will come to this, never go, go to the lesion. So I will go to the lesion easily. Now you see how I went. My rota bar is there, out. Now I'm going slowly towards the lesion. I'll see, slowly towards the lesion, okay? And you see, and you, in rota you should, you should be very, very patient. Don't push the rota bar it, because it is not a, a balloon. You push, it will go on its own. And from this, you know another thing. The rotational atherectomy does not need a very active guide catheter support because the orthogonal friction is reduced by rotation. So, the guide catheter is only there to direct the bar towards a lesion. Not really a very support guide catheter is needed. So after that, uh, we finish the you know, barring, then we put uh, stents, and ultimately this is the result. So with that, I end here. So angiography is the cornerstone of coronary artery disease. And it includes both coronary and LV angiography. Only angiography, uh, coronary anatomy is not enough. Despite a lot of devices and, and imaging, still the basic plan of PCI is based on angiography. So be, be very cautious when you do it, and be very cautious when you read it. Thank you very much.